Hello everyone, I hope you're doing great and welcome back to the fourth and final part of my super strong DIY CNC build. Now if you haven't seen the first parts, I recommend you click somewhere up here on the screen and it'll take you to the playlist. Now for this video, I got three things planned. First, I want to take some time to properly align this machine. Second, I want to install the motors and the electronics in the base. And third, if all that actually works out, I'm going to try and make a test cut. Now if you want to skip any of those parts, feel free to use the timestamps that will magically appear somewhere on this screen. Now to align my linear rails, I bought this dial indicator with this mag base. But literally the second I hold it in my hands, I realize that aluminum is not magnetic, so this is pretty useless to me right now. But I'm sure at some other time I'm gonna find a use for it. Now the second option for mounting this is this thing right here, which I normally use to mount my cameras. It got like three degrees of freedom and you can clamp it somewhere. And on this side there is a quarter inch, 20 threads per inch thread that you can use to mount most cameras. Now the problem is this does not fit here. But through the power of 3D printing I managed to print this and let's see if I can find it here. On one side you have the threads and the other side is 10 millimeters and that'll fit perfectly on here. So I can thread that on here very easily, I might add. And then mount my dial indicator. And that actually worked surprisingly well. Now hopefully you can see my setup for the x-axis. I got the dial indicator clamped to the x platen and it's gonna ride on top of the back plate. Now the needle is gonna wiggle around quite a bit because this is not a perfectly flat surface but it's the best reference surface I got so you know it's, it's gonna work. The linear rails themselves are not screwed in entirely so they can wiggle around a bit so I can adjust them and my general idea is I'm gonna align the top rail with the top surface then screw that in tightly and align the bottom one with the first one. And I'm gonna zoom in now a bit so you can see that needle move. Every line on this dial indicator is equal to 0.01 millimeter. So one full rotation is equal to one millimeter. And if I move this over here carefully, you can see that this side is 0.13 millimeter higher than this side. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust that off camera because it's tricky to do that while filming and show you the results. So after about 10 minutes of tuning, I got this within four or five hundredths of a millimeter. And that is probably as good as I'm ever gonna get this. Actually, I'm surprised I even got it this good. So, you know, there's hope for this project. It is now about 90 minutes later and I wanted to throw this thing against the wall at least five times. It is so sensitive that everything counts. Yeah, like you, you tighten in the screws and this thing goes off by 10 millimeters, like 10 hundredths of a millimeter. So you need to approximate beforehand how much the screw turns will set off the reading and you know take all of that into account. So yeah, it took me quite a while to get this dialed in. But now I got the bottom linear bearing and the ball screw bearing all within three hundredths of a millimeter. So yeah, I I'm pretty proud of that. So all that's left to do now is to do the other two axes. So I guess I'll see you tomorrow, cause I'm gonna take a break. New day, new shirt, new task. Electronics. So here are most of the electronics I'm gonna use in this project. I got a beefy 24 volt power supply and an Arduino Uno as the main controller. That's gonna run Gerbil and connect through this homemade breakout board to a parallel port breakout, breakout board. I'm not using parallel port, but I still want the optic couple, so the optical isolation. This is gonna connect to the DM542 um, microstep driver board, uh, and that's gonna connect to those NEMA 23 stepper motors using this four phase wire that's isolated on the outside and extra flexible. I got some nice beefy drag chain, some emergency end switches, uh, some relays that are gonna power the spindle and the coolant pump. I got some connectors and you know lots of bits and pieces. 
Now first off, I want to make two panels. One panel that goes in the front for the interface and one panel that goes in the back. Now ultimately that's gonna be made out of aluminium, but for now this is all I got. So I'm gonna mount it on the old CNC and make some chips. So these are the panels you just saw the machine cut. What I did was I sanded them down and gave them a few coats with this spray lacquer. And they look kind of nice, you can see they have a nice sheen. Uh, but there are two things I want to share with you. Number one, never trust anything you read or see on the internet. I was too lazy to go down to the basement. Uh, to look for the dimension of this fitting here. So I looked it up from the vendor's side and it said 30 millimeters, but it actually was 32. And so those didn't fit in here, so I had to take a Dremel tool and enlarge the holes by a bit. And now they're not that nice and round anymore. It's You're not gonna be able to see it, but could have been nice if it worked right away. So that's on me. And also double check your coordinate system in the cam software, because I did not. And even though I said it correctly on the machine, uh, the software thought it was a tiny bit like, I think, three millimeters to the right. And now this side is looking fine, but I have like two or three millimeters missing on this side. Normally I would redo that, but I have no materials left. So, you know, it's not a biggie, but again, could have been prevented. There is metal dust all over me. I am very exhausted, but they are done. They are looking very nice. Here's the one for the front and the one in the back. And now that I see them on wood with the aluminium, I actually like them a lot. So I might redo them with some nicer hardwood. One month. It took me one entire month to finish this machine to a point where I can work with it. And that's not only because I took some time off because of frustration and to work on some other projects like the lighting that you can hopefully see. I also had some major problems with both electronics and mechanics. So let's have a look and I'll show you what happened. My first problem is this breakout board. It came with a kit, it's undocumented and you can't find any data sheets using the number that's on here. So what I did was I tried to reverse engineer it, uh, look up the traces, look where they went. It's pretty obvious that the inputs go to the optocouples, but there was also two chips on here. They were inverters for some reason, I don't know. I couldn't get it to work for the life of me, so in the end I just kind of jumped the wires directly from the input to the input of the optocouples. That kind of worked, but then um, the signal for the limit switches kind of didn't work and it was all really painful and frustrating so in the end I tossed the whole thing and made my own circuit and that's working really fine right now. The second thing was my pulley reduction. The pulleys would come loose, wander to the back and the belt would wear out really quick because it would rub against the side of those. So the solution after some trial and error was to grind some flat spots onto the shafts and then secure the set screws with Loctite to protect them against vibrating. And until now, that worked really well. As a first test for the accuracy and cutting capability, I thought some plywood would be a good start. I'm starting with a 3mm drill bit to get the screw positions, since the plywood is only held down with double sided tape for now. For the pockets I'm using a 3mm bit with a 6.5mm cutting depth and a 0.3mm step over. Since it cuts like butter, I'm very sure I could have gone with at least 1mm step over. The contour cuts have a 1mm depth of cut with full engagement. So here's the finished part. All the edges are nice and clean and we can see that this dimension was supposed to be 20mm. 
and it is pretty close. It's kind of hard to tell because the calipers just dig into the wood, but I'd say that it's within two one hundredth of a millimeter, and that's close enough for me. And with that, I can successfully finish this series up. Please let me know if you would like to see a video of me comparing my old CNC to my new CNC and talk about the design and the cost of the build. It would also be great if you liked this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. In the outro you're gonna see a few shots of the underside of the machine, where the electronics are located and a few detailed shots of the mechanics. Until the next video, have a great day!